How is it going, fellow gamers? In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look into the newly added Elemental Lord Enchant, and we are going to be putting our own little spin on it. I hope you boys enjoy this powerfully unorthodox build as much as I did playing with it, and let me just say, this shit is actually kind of insane. How is it going, boys? I hope everyone watching is having a great day. I want to start off the video by thanking each and every single one of you guys for smashing that 175 like goal in the last video. The commenter Rick Stansberry has been chosen to receive the 50 DP Unleashed Elemental Elite War Chest. I hope you enjoy your prize, my man. If this video can hit 225 likes in just three days, that is 72 hours, I will hand out yet another 100 DP Elemental Mastery War Chest to a commenter on this video. Now, let's get into the build. For this video, I'm gonna start off with my level 1 rolls since those are kind of odd. What you'll want to draft first is Mana Forged Barrier as well as Tethered Elemental. You could go for Earth Shock and Tethered Elemental, but this choice could prohibit you from queuing as a tank if you're unable to roll Mana Forged Barrier by level 14. We do this specifically because Tether Elemental needs to be drafted at level 1, and Mana Forged Barrier is better to be drafted right away so you don't have to high roll it. As for skill cards, I used Invocation as well as Innervate, and for my lucky cards, I used Flame Shock, Lava Burst, and Hellfire. You will see why I used Hellfire when we get into the next portion of the video. Now, let's get into the enchants utilized for this build, with the first of which being Elemental Lord. What Elemental Lord does is make it so that your Elemental Blast no longer gives you a buff, but no longer has a cooldown. Furthermore, critical damage with Elemental Blast resets the cooldown on our shock spells, with each and every single one of our shock spells also providing for us a different form of increase to damage if you have an Elemental. If you have an Elemental, Earth Shock will trigger an Aftershock, which deals additional damage for 3 seconds, as well as causing our our elemental's abilities to cost 20% less mana, plus it increases their spell haste by 20% for 12 seconds. Use of Flame Shock, on the other hand, has a 20% chance to reset the cooldown of our Lava Burst and causes our Tethered Elemental to have a 30% increased critical strike chance for 15 seconds. As for Frost Shock, that solidifies your Lava Burst, causing it to deal 30% increase to damage, as well as causing your Elemental to begin regenerating their missing mana. And on top of it all, critical strikes from your Elemental increase the damage on your next Elemental Blast by 20%. This enchant has a lot Lot to follow, but just know what the shocks do to your elemental when you use them, as that is the most important information for this enchant in specific. As for epic enchants utilized, we first have Echoing Power, which increases the threat of our shaman shocks, as well as providing for your shocks bonus abilities on use if you fill out the Booming Echoes talent all the way. If you fill out your Booming Echoes talent, it causes your Earth Shock to reduce the damage you take from physical attackers by 4%, as well as increasing your nature damage by 5%. Your Flame Shock deals fire damage to attackers when struck in melee, and your Frost Shock increases your threat generation by 6%. This stacks directly with your Elemental Lord, making it so our shocks provide a multitude of effects. Second, we used a newly added World Forged Enchant in Iron Sand. You can get Iron Sand by farming the Scythalid Hydrone in the Shimmering Flats of Thousand Needles, as you see on your screen now. What Iron Sand does is transform your Hellfire into Iron Sand, which slows the target within its casting range, causing periodic nature damage within the effect every 0.95 seconds, as well as also applying a bleed dealing damage every single one second stacking up to three times lasting 14 seconds. This is gonna be how we pump massive DPS even when we are inside of the Mana Forged Barrier. Third for epics, we used Emanating Light so we can pull on the move, this enchant helping primarily with the pacing of the dungeons. Now, as for the rare enchants, we used first Spiritual Attunement times three so that we can receive 4% of the amount we are healed for as mana. Next, we used Dream State times three which regenerates your mana equal to 4% of your intellect every five seconds, even while you're casting. Third, we use Divine Intellect times 3, which increases your total intellect by 1%, so pretty much a 3% increase. Fourth, we use the Lunar Guidance times 3 to increase our spell power by 3% of our intellect. And lastly, we use Cataclysm times 3 for the purpose of increasing the damage on our Iron Sand by a total of 9%. As for the talents with this build, those will be linked in the description as an image, as a link to the site builder, and it will also be in my Discord, along with a lot of other information on this build and all of my other builds. Would love to see you in there. All of the abilities you will want to try and get your hands on as your prestige will be in the description of this video underneath the build and enchants. Now, let's get into how the build operates. 
Alrighty, boys, so to start, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have your Retribution Aura turned on, as well as your Thorns applied. To start off a pull, I suggest you use your Flame Shock so that while your enemies hit you, they're taking fire damage thanks to your Echoing Power Enchant, as you see here. Increases your fire damage by 5% and causes fire damage to attackers. Plus, you gotta take into consideration all the extra damage that you're doing with your Thorns, Retribution Aura, and Consecration. Once you have completed your pull and you have the pack you want to start chunking down, the best rotation is gonna be popping your Consecration, followed by your invocation then you're gonna want to cast your earth shock and then you're gonna want to cast your sandstorm you want to do this because your earth shock increases your nature damage by five percent and your iron sandstorm right there that thing i'm a jinger that does nature damage so you're gonna you're gonna want to make sure you cast your earth shock to increase the damage on your iron sand that is really pretty much it for aoe make sure you always have your flame shock up when you're pulling it always have your earth shock up when you were done pulling and you're about to use your iron sand now, for the single target, this guy's already doing the right thing because you're going to want to have your pet attacking all the time single target. It is super important as your single target rotation pretty much relies around your elemental lord enchant as it is baseline. You're going to be able to hold aggro while pumping your elemental lord rotation because we are in mana forged barrier form, making it so mana abilities do increase your threat. Like I said, though, this is pretty much just your elemental lord rotation. Make sure you have your shocks up. Make sure you're using your lava burst after your shocks and make sure you're using your elemental blast to bring your shocks back up earlier than what they normally would be on their cooldown. Anyway, though boys now that you know how the build operates i'm gonna go ahead and hop into the gameplay i will see you boys in the dungeon peace out oh uh, i don't think you guys would believe me if i told you that i just got an instant cube yeah 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 that happened hey this isn't a bad dungeon this isn't a bad dungeon i think i actually ran this the last dungeon can't remember what i ran fuck this is the kind of situations you're gonna want to use your flame shock by the way this is when you want to spam that shit have these motherfuckers follow through hit your evocation bam boom bam easy peasy earth shock whenever i fucking can hit it because i'm rooted i guess and then you do your iron sand and then you just sit back put your hands behind your head and watch the wall of numbers spam your screen it's absolute. oh it's so nice it's it's absolutely fantastic top dps without even breaking a sweat dude just as an FYI, it's obvious to me, and maybe it's not to you guys, you're gonna want to be stacking intellect for this build because you are a mana forged barrier build, you are, you're mitigating damage with your mana, that's what you want to stack up. Armor's also gonna be important because when they break through that mana, it's going to be armor. Main stat, intellect, very important. Oh, fuck. Fuck. Twelve seconds later. Oh, dude, I got him coming down. That was that was probably the most epic move I've ever made in my entire life. Do you guys fucking see that? Please tell me you saw that. Somebody clip it. Oh, we lost a DPS, but that's all right. I'll, I'll pick up their spot. Don't worry. I'll be the DPS while you're gone, my guy. I'm actually the best DPS in the fucking dungeon, but I'm assuming that this this group of people doesn't really represent the, uh, the best players of Ascension. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these are the best players on Ascension. I don't know. But we're just really too good. We're just too good. It's this fucking... That's just how it is. Who's Zephram? See, now I'm gonna hit my flame shock, keep popping my con. I'm gonna go over here, conk. I meant to say con sec. Con sec? I'm just gonna say conk. Conk is easier to say than con sec. I'm gonna keep popping my conk. Make sure you keep popping your flame shonk. Hit that, uh. Oh shit, I accidentally canceled it because I moved. That was a very noob move. Don't do that, guys. Please don't be me. Whoops. Honestly, I'd have to say the biggest noob move you can make with this build is moving while you cast your Iron Sand, because if you do, you have to recast it, and the mana cost is quite substantial, 1,297. You cast it twice, half your mana's gone, and you're taking a shit ton of damage. Not, not smart plays, not smart plays. But I'm not top damage right now, which is really sad. Oh, we don't have to be top damage, your tank. I don't fucking care, alright? I like pushing these builds to their upper limits. Listen, listen, if you can only perform one roll, your builds, your builds cheese. What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? I got the whole fucking room on me. I only pulled one fox. I only pulled- What? Ha- Okay. You pull one of these things out of the room, you don't pull all of them. That's insane. Did not know that. I feel like the biggest improvements that need to be made are likely single target, but honestly, single target really isn't all too much of an issue, honestly. We're doing well over 1.5 thousand damage single target in Monoforged Barrier as a tank, so do we really even need to have a good single target as a tank, or do we just need to be able to stay alive and hold threat? Which we do very easily. We just also do damage. Oh, why am I always falling? Look at these numbers, though. Mm. The actual DPS can't even keep up with me. I get complimented for how little damage I take, and I also do the most damage in the group. Not the most, but... Oh, boys, you finished her up. Nice. That's lit as fuck. 
Alrighty, boys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video here instead of the greatest cheese shop in all of Stormwind, Tria's Cheese. I hope everyone watching still enjoyed the video and found this elemental lord taking damage hybrid build interesting and broken enough to give a try yourself. If you learned something new or had a laugh, a like and subscribe is greatly appreciated. Absolutely no pressure, of course. Also, again, extra information on this build and every other build I have in my Discord. Link in the description. Love you, boys, and peace.